Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to cycle through an array. And it's a very handy function. And I would, it's going to show you what you might use this for. This tutorial is actually going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be how to cycle through the array. And then the second part is going to be how to set up the motion graphics to switch between two potential characters. So what this is, is the idea for this was if your character, let's say, wanted to make a phone call or engage with somebody over the phone and there was going to be a back and forth conversation, not really a selection of responses, but just a back and forth dialogue that they were going to cycle through. And this is what this would look like. So we have uh, your player here. And then if I hit one, the taxi service, hola, your player, I need a ride to where your player at the airport <laughs> taxi what is your name my name is whatever you know what is your address and then it just kind of keeps going from there and it's just cycling through a, an array right there so anyway i'll be back in just a minute and we'll work on the cycling through the loop Hey, we're back and I'll try to go as fast as I can. So this is just on cycling through an array right here. The second part of this will be how to switch as if you're had two characters talking in a text message. Okay, so we're in the blueprint first person template. We're just gonna double click into this. We're gonna start this. We're gonna trigger this by a keyboard event. So we're just gonna go keyboard event one. So every time I hit one, this is gonna trigger this. And then there's two variables that we're going to need. We're going to need an array. So I'm just going to call this my array. And it's a text variable. And it's going to be an array. So we set that over there. We can make it public and go compile and save. And then we need one more variable. And this is going to be our index, index counter. And this is not an array. This is going to be an integer. And so we need to set that back to single. And we can compile and save that. Doesn't need to be public, but we can set it public anyway. Okay, now if I come over on the array, I can just put in a list of elements here. So let's say to cycle through. So let's say when I have seven elements, and I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and seven. And of course this, could be a dialogue, so I should probably be putting a dialogue in there. But I'm just going to leave it that for now. So we have something at least in our array. Now, we're going to be creating a widget, a display, not a print string. So we have to, that adds a little bit more time to this, but I want to get in the habit of creating event dispatchers to communicate and then not binding like I've been doing in the past. So I'm just getting in the motor, the muscle memory buildup. So to create the event dispatcher we just come here and I'm just going to call this array update and I'm going to go ahead and put an input on here so I'll just call this update array and I'll just it's going to be text and it's going to be it's going to be text and it's going to be an array so this is just a channel through which information is going to travel. It's not going to return values or anything. And we're going to get an update on that in a minute here. So now that I have that set, I can go call array update and it's right here. And I can plug this in here and then it's going to want something plugged into it. So I'll put my array into it. So this is just for sending information. It's not going to return a value or anything. So that's all we need to do for this and watch when I compile and save, I'm gonna get a note, not a warning, just saying no value but will be returned by this. And that's fine, because I'm just sending information. So now we're gonna create, let me go ahead and dock this. Now we're gonna go ahead and create our display, our widget blueprint, and we'll just leave it called new widget blueprint. And here we're just gonna get a canvas panel, and drag that on, and then we're just gonna get some text and drag that right in the middle like that. And we'll just call this element display. And that's all we have to do with that. 
we compile and save and now we can jump over into the graph portion of this and so there's a little bit of work involved so we are going to go off the event construct so we can delete this and delete that and the event construct is going to trigger every time there's an update so every time i press the so the first thing we want to do is create a connection to that first person blueprint we want the variables inside of there and we want the an object reference to to that and so how we do that is we just drag here and we'll go cast to bp first person right here and then we'll go get player character right there. And this creates a surefire level of communication. Here we'll just promote to variable and now that's all set. So we're all good to go. There, where That establishes our communication. Now once that communication is established, I can get that event dispatcher and I'm gonna look for the bind. So bind event to update array. And when I drag off, I need a custom event. So I'll drag off of here and go custom event. And notice when I do, there's that array. So I can get the array values off of here. So that's great. And then the only other thing I need is I do need that, that uh, I can just, with this variable over here, I can just drag off of it and I can get my what is it called? The counter, the get index counter. Yeah. So this will be, this is our running total of our index values that we'll use to sort through the array. So when we're at this level, all I have to do now is just get the array. So I can just drag off of here and go get, and I can get a copy of it right here. And then I can just plug this into this right there. So that will cycle through our array and then we want it to display. So one thing I notice I got to do is come back here on my text and set it to a variable. I didn't do that. And now it's a variable. I can get it over here. And what we want to do is get it and then we want to set it. So we're going to go set text right here. And then all we have to do is just plug everything in. So, so this goes there. And we put both of these in. Now you can experiment with just putting one in, but it'll see it works fine with both of them in at the same time. And basically that completes our our functionality. So it's every time the buttons press, it's going to get it's going to establish a connection to the first person, and then we're going to bind to the event dispatcher, and then it's going to let us get into the array, and then we're going to get an instance each element of the array according to the counter, and then it should print out whatever's in our array over here. So basically, we're done here, and now we just have to do some. This is really kind of the main thing of the tutorial is the going through the loop, cycling through the loop, and that's all we have left to do. And so basically to do this, we just have to get, we need to know how many elements are in the array. And so we need to get the length of the array. So we're gonna get, get my array, drag off of here and go to length, length. And we don't wanna go to the end of the array. We wanna just go one, right to the end of the array so we're going to subtract one from the length so we'll go subtract and that'll be one and if it's greater than or less than that number then we'll keep looping until we get to the end and so what we'll do is we're going to search for the index value the index counter here and it's greater than or less greater than or equal to, and this goes in here, to that value. And then that's set up, and this will be our condition. So then I'll drag off of here, I hit P, click a branch node, and we plug this in here, and then the condition goes in here. And then if it's if we hit the, the max value, then we want to reset the index. So we'll just drag this and go set, 
and put it in there and we'll reset. If we're not at the end of the array, then we want to keep incrementing by one the index so it cycles through. So this is what creates our cycling through here. So we want to go ahead, I can hit Control D. So I'm going to do another one of those. And then I want to get the counter here. And then up here, we're going to just add one. So we'll keep adding one. So this is our incrementing function here. And that's it. That's the whole thing. If you want to take a picture of that, you can. And then that's it. And we'll compile and save. And if we come in here and hit play, I should be able, oops, I didn't add it to the viewport. So we got to create a widget here. Create widget. That's why print string is so much easier to do. New bl widget blueprint and add the viewport. But since the next tutorial is going to be about something else, I'm going to just, I wanted to have this all set up anyway. So, okay. So compile and save. And we'll hit print. Now, if I come in and I hit one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I'm just cycling through the array. And that's all there is to it. So if you're interested in seeing how this could be turned into like a dialogue thing with text, just check the next tutorial out. So take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.